measurements, uh, some observable that would correspond to our Goldstein out being exactly twice that mass, some measurement that would probe that there's actually two Goldsteini uh, in the universe, one which is uneaten and the other one which is eaten. And a, me a measurement that would, would confirm this would be quite dramatic. It would tell you not only that supersymmetry is correct, but that there's extra hidden structure in our universe uh, that we're only barely being able to scratch the surface with a collider like the LHC. And so what I want to give you is a sense of what a smoking gun for, for this type of scenario is. And the smoking gun is this seemingly convoluted, this is my attempt at building uh, an event display. Uh, the smoking gun of the LHC is the following. Stable charge tracks stopping in the CMS calorimeter, and I can say CMS calorimeter, not Atlas, since this is CMS week, uh, eventually decaying to bichromatic leptons. And the fact that these leptons coming out are going to be bichromatic, that's going to give us two peaks that will allow us to verify this <coughs> confusing factor of two. Okay, so I want to explain to you what this event display uh, actually is. So the players in this game, uh, uh, the players in this game are going to be the Smuon, uh, the supersymmetric version of who ordered that, the Goldstino, and the Gravitino. We want to find some experimental measurement that would tell us about these states. Here is their various masses, and note that I put the Gravitino at exactly half the mass of the Goldstino, as predicted by this crazy theory. Uh, you also see two other mass scales that will come in and play <coughs> over the minor role. So right now we're running 7 TeV collisions at the LHC. We currently have an inverse nanobarn of data. Uh, we hope to have an inverse femtobarn of data uh, by the end of 2011. And it's possible, uh, if this scenario is true, that you would see 100 events that look like this. Okay, so what are you seeing? You're seeing PP collisions going into the board, sprays of particles going out, projected onto the transverse plane. And I think your eye is probably naturally drawn to these curvy green things. What the heck are those? Uh, well, this is the CMS logo. And if I do a uh, scale transformation and rotation of the CMS logo, okay, <laughs> the, what you're seeing here, well, the CMS uh, uh, has magnetic fields uh, ingoing in this region, outgoing in the other region, and what you're seeing must be some charged particle transversing through your detector. Uh, this charged particle, you might say, oh, I know things that go all the way through. Muons do that. Uh, however, if you were to calculate uh, a combination of time of flight information, uh, uh, DDX information, and uh, uh, momentum information from the bending, you would determine, huh, this is, doesn't really look like a good muon. Uh, it seems to be too heavy. This can't be a muon. In fact, what you've discovered is the supersymmetric partner of the muon, the smuon. Here it is, the supersymmetric partner of the smuon, screaming through your detector against who ordered this crazy thing. Uh, you see two of them. They curve oppositely because they're going to have uh, equal and opposite charges. The smuon is going to play a key role in the story that I'm going to tell here. So the first hint <coughs> that something interesting uh, might be going on would be the observation of stable or quasi-stable charge tracks. Why do I say stable? At least stable on collider time scales that they would escape through your detector. Now, there's other sorts of junk in this event, and this other sorts of junk is just coming from uh, uh, other supersymmetric particles uh, being produced. So actually what's happening uh, in this event is that we have QCD pair production of the standard model, uh, the partner of the standard model gluon, the gluino, cascade decaying down, giving two jets to a neutralino, uh, which then cascades down, yielding off a muon to end in the smuon. So your final state that you see here is really two muons, two smuons, four jets, and no missing energy. So this is a scenario where, unlike in traditional supersymmetry, uh, where missing energy often uh, signals the existence of a dark matter particle, in this case, there is no missing energy. We're not seeing any sort of dark matter candidate in this event. Uh, what I want you to focus on, though, is I want you to focus on this muon. This is a particle that's charged. It seems to be stable on collider time scales. Uh, we want to study this particle. In particular, we know that exactly stable charged particles uh, are a very strong bound. So this thing must decay at some point. Uh, we don't see heavy uh, water lying around. So, so this guy, uh, it must decay. Uh, so what you can hope for is you can hope that in some of these events where you have pair production of smuons, sometimes one of the smuons is going slow enough that actually through ionization energy loss it gets stopped in your calorimeter. And I've also cited some people here who talk about building an external uh, stopper detector to CMS to stop uh, uh, charged stable particles. This smuon is stopped. It's just sitting there. Uh, and during a beam off period, uh, you can imagine waiting for this guy to decay. And it would decay like the following. The decay would give you 
coming out of nowhere, a muon screaming out. So you wait 10 seconds, the sky decays. Well, we know that energy momentum is conserved, so you can't just have a muon decay to a muon and nothing else. Something must be going the other way. And you can infer the mass of the thing going the other way via a combination of the muon mass, the muon mass, and the energy of that muon. And by measuring this muon energy, it will be monochromatic, if this is all you saw, monochromatic muons coming out, you would infer the existence of a, a, a neutral particle. And in this story, this neutral particle is the Goldsteino. And again, you can get the mass of that Goldsteino as mass of 120 uh, GeV in this example. OK, we've seen the Goldsteino. And you might say, how could I see the other state, the Goldsteino in the other sector that was eaten by the Gravitino? Well, gravity couples everything together, and so the interaction eigenstates and the mass eigenstates are somewhat mixed. And typically, the branching fraction of a smuon to a Goldsteino and a smuon to a Gravitino can be non-negligible, such that you can actually see a second decay that sometimes, with a branching fraction of, let's say, 10 to the minus 2 or 10 to the minus 3, you'd actually see a muon screaming out with a different energy. This muon screaming out with a different energy would be coming from the decay of the muon all the way down to the gravitino. Again, using the mass of the muon, the mass of the muon, and the energy of the muon, you would infer the mass of this gravitino. In this example, the inferred mass is 60 GPV. And here's your smoking gun. So we produced stable charge tracks. They stopped. We waited for them to decay. And they decayed bichromatically. <coughs> gave us two different peaks. One peak corresponding to our Goldsteino. Another peak corresponding to their Goldsteino, which was eaten by the Gravitino, they're exactly separated by a factor of two up to experimental errors and this uh, slight theoretical uncertainty. And a measurement of this, a measurement of the differential spectrum in smuon decay, would give you amazing information about the structure of our universe. Again, not only that the universe is supersymmetric, but there's hidden sectors out there. So we are not alone. On the other hand, we're not on speaking terms. <laughs> and this may be, in some sense, the only way we could uh, infer the existence of these hidden sectors of nature. OK, so the story that I've told you today uh, is a story uh, involving breaking supersymmetry multiple times, inspired in, in, uh, by successes in the past of breaking symmetries. And just see what happens. Uh, this is uh, 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 flights of fancy of the mind. What could happen <coughs> if you break supersymmetry multiple times? We get a surprise. We get a fairly robust uh, uh, prediction for masses that can be tested uh, at the LHC. Uh, and let me just conclude that you know what we're really looking for uh, at the LHC, we're really excited about probing the origin of electric symmetry breaking. To finally say for certain, yes, it is really true, W and Z bosons, uh, they get their mass from spontaneously broken gauge theory. The observation of the Sakurai 6 boson would be just absolutely amazing. Uh, but we also should be open to all the other symmetry structures, weird phenomena that might be present at the LHC. Uh, and so uh, I'll, I'll leave it with that. Thank you very much.